Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So, I hope you guys are enjoying the data structure algorithm series. With this video, we are going to talk about the sorting algorithm. It will be on whiteboard as well as on the coding side also. We will see that how to implement these logics in the form of Java code. You can use any of the language. That's your choice. Now, um, what do you mean by sorting? Sorting means, let's see, especially on, with respect to arrays, we have unsorted arrays are there and we have to sort it. Let's see some pricing array is available. We have to sort that from the descending to ascending order or ascending to descending order that we have to check it. So uh, we have to check that, okay, all the lower prices should be displayed first and then the higher prices, it will go like this. But on the dynamic application, the pricing is so dynamically coming and then it's totally unstructured or totally available in the unsorted array. We have to sort it, make sure that my sorting algorithm is written properly. It is very well uh, optimized or not. So which sorting algorithm that we have to use it. There are a number of sorting algorithms are available. But today we are going to talk about the bubble sort. So your ultimate target is that you have to sort the algorithm. Either it is sorted array, then you don't need to do anything. But if it is unsorted array, then we have to do it. How to apply the logic for that. For example, let's say this is the array where uh, five elements are available. Let's see, five, four, three, two, one. Or any random order which is having some elements are there, but in the unsorted array. My job is that we have to sort it. So in the bubble sort, simple basic logic is that you have to start, let's see, I'm starting from here, and then you immediately check the next element. Let's see, next element is four over here. So the next element, if it is lesser, then you need to do a swap here, okay? You must have heard about swapping two numbers with the help of temporary variable or any third variable. So we will do the exactly same thing that we will swap 4 and 5 and 5 and 4 like this. So I'll do one thing. I'll compare these two guys and then 4 is less than 5. Yes. So I'll just put it here and then 5 here and then this is 3, then 2 and then 1 here. Okay. So let's see I'm doing in the first iteration. This first swap is done. Then I'm going to check 5 and 3 here. Obviously the next set that I have to check. Then 4 will remain same. 3 and then 5 because 3 is less than 5. So I'll just keep 3 here and then 5 here and then 2 and 1 will remain same. Then again I'm going to check these two guys. Then 4, then 3, then 2, then 5 because 2 is less than 5. And then I'll keep 1 over here. Then I'll check last two elements, last two sets. I mean last two elements in the last set. So this will be 4, this will be 3, this will be 2 and 1 and then 5. Perfect. And then all the sets are done. So what exactly we have uh, observed? This is a first, second, third and fourth. Four times swap that we have done. Let's see for these number of elements. So number of elements are n. So how many times swap that we have done? n minus one time swapping that we have done it over here with this particular, uh, with these number of elements. Okay. And in the first iteration where iteration, let's see, i is equal to one. Now we have to talk about the second iteration then what will happen. So let's see in the second iteration where i is equal to two, so what is the last out, output that we got? 4, then 3, then 2, 1 and 5. I'll write it here once again. Okay. Then again I'll check 4 with 3. Yes, 3 is a smaller. So I'll write 3, then 4, then 2, then 1 and then 5. I'll check again these two ways. So I'll check 3. Yes, 2 is a smaller. So I'll write 2 here, then 4, then 1 and then 5 here. Then I'll check 4 and 1. So I'll write 3. Then 2, yes. Do I need to swap? Yes. So again write 1 and then 4 and then 5 here. Then I'll check these two guys once again. Right? In the next set, in the next iteration. So I'll write, okay, fine. This is 3. Then 2. Then 1. Do I need to change it? No. I don't need to change it. So let it be like this over here. It means I don't need to swap it. So that's exactly like this because 5 is not smaller than 4. So in the second iteration, how many swaps that we have done? 1, 2, 3. Sorry, 1, 2 and 3 and then uh, here we did not swap anything. So only 3 times we have done it. So I am saying n minus uh, 2 times the swaps that we have done where n is number of elements. So 5 minus 2 means 3 times swap that we have done. 1, 2, 3. See this we did not do that here. Okay. So what is the last outcome? 3, 2, 1, 4, 5. So I do one thing. 3, 2, 1, 4 and then 5 I will write it here. And then I'm saying in the third iteration, third iteration means for i is equal to a 3. Then what will happen? Again, I'll start with 3 and 2. So yes, 2 and then 3, then 1, then 4 and then 5. 
I'll check 3 and 1. So I'll write 2, then 1, 3, and then 4, and then 5. Then I'll check this. No, I don't need to swap it. Then I'll check this. No, I don't need to swap it. Okay. So how many times swap is done? 1 and 2 times. Again, for i is equal to 4, four iteration, then what will happen? I'll take, this is 2, 1, 3, 4, and then 5. I'll check these two numbers once again, yes. So I'll just keep here 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, and then 5. Perfect. So this is the sorted element that we have captured. So what exactly we got? How many iterations, how many uh, swaps that we have done? Only one. That's it. So here you can see, that was the input of the function, let's see, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And what exactly we are getting? 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So in the bubble sort, we just need to check the next element. If the next element is the smaller, then only we have to swap it. Otherwise, we just leave it and then we will proceed to the next set of elements. So that's what if we calculate the time complexity of this algorithm, the worst case scenario, if array is completely unsorted, so how many times? It means, see, first time, i is moving over here, let's see, towards this direction. This is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and 4. Let's see, these are the indexes over here. Right, so let's see, n number of times it is uh, moving. And then we have to keep swapping also, right? Inside the inner loop, then swap this element also. Then we have to check, keep checking. So this is another iteration that we are performing, right? Inside the inner loop, one time, second time, third time, fourth time. That is also, let's see, happening n number of times over here. So what will be the time complexity? The time complexity, can I say, it is O of n square times that we perform, right? So obviously O n square is quite expensive. If you have number of elements are more and more, it means let's say there are thousand elements are there, which is completely unsorted. It will give you O n square of time complexity. If elements are already sorted, <clears throat> then in the best case scenario, it will give you O of n. It will just keep checking that, okay, yeah, everything is fine. No need to swap. In that case, only iterations it has to perform and that's it. And it will give you O of one of uh, space complexity also because we just need to declare some variables or take some auxiliary space. That's it. O of one of the space complexity. But in the worst case scenario, O of n square, it will take it. So yes, this is not that sufficient as compared to other sorting algorithm, but Bubble sort, you can use it for the uh, smaller array sites where number of elements are less, but when you have more and more elements, for example, you go to Amazon application, there are millions of products are there. And let's see, in the laptop category, thousand products are there and every thousand product having its own price. And I really want to store all the pricing information in the array. And I really want to sort that array. The bubble sort will be very expensive because it's going to give you O n square in that case. Let's see uh, all the student marks, how many employees are there. I really want to sort employee salary. That will be an integer or double array. Then in that case also the bubble sort will be uh, very expensive because number of employees, number of customers, number of users, number of products are larger set, right? In the practical or in the uh, real time examples. So that's what the bubble sort, generally we use it for the small set of array. Otherwise, we have other sorting algorithm that we are going to talk about in the next upcoming chapters. Don't worry about that. Now let's see how to implement this logic in the form of coding. We are going to use Java for that. Same implementation you can do in C, C++ or C Sharp also whatever the Python language or any other language that you are using it. But I'm going to use Java quickly. So let's see the same algorithm with Java also how to do it. So what we do that we will write a simple function and then we will write, we will supply the array uh, to that particular function. We will write the logic there. And at the time of interview, one thing you have to remember that we have to keep checking that particular function with a different set of data. Let's see, sorted array, unsorted array, duplicate values, negative values, like that. And we have to make sure that, okay, the algorithm is working fine or not. And all the my test cases are working fine or not like this, right? So let's see how to do this. So I'll just open my Eclipse and then let's see. So let's create a method here. Let's see public, um, I'll make it a static so that I can call it directly. So public is static void. Let's see, this is my uh, bubble sort method. And this method will take one, for example, integer array here. Okay, so this is the array input. I'm taking it here. And then I'll do one thing that, uh, uh, okay, let's write it. Let's simple, let's see a for loop that we are going to write. And when I call this function, right? And then I'm going to declare an array from the main method. 
and then i'm creating an array let's see for example let's see 20 comma uh, 23 comma uh, let's see 15 then comma 67 comma 89 comma uh, 90 here or let's see some smaller number let's see a uh, 12 here so this is completely unsorted array here you can see this is 20 and 23 like this so we have to keep checking if uh, or i'll do one thing i'll just make this guy uh, 13 so that 13 is smaller so we will shift 13 to 20 and 20 to 13 here like this okay and then i'm going to call this particular function so i'm just going to call this bubble sort function and uh, I'm supplying this particular array. So this array will be given to this guy. And now I'm going to write a simple for loop. So in the first iteration, let's see integer i is equal to zero and up to what? Up to the length of this particular array and then i plus plus. Okay. And then what exactly we are going to write here that uh, i is equal to zero and then i less than up to length of this array. I'm going to write another for loop that is uh, j is equal to zero and uh, j is less than what i'm going to write array dot length minus i times okay because once we reach at the last set let's see these two elements are already uh, sorted then we don't need to go to the last element so i'm simply writing up to minus i and then j plus plus over here right and as i mentioned that in the bubble sort we have to check uh, 20 and 30 so i'll do one thing this 20 30 for our example point of view let's see for reference point of view i'll just keep it here so 20 and 30 we have to check it so what i told you in the bubble sort that if uh the next element is a smaller than then we have to swap it so i'll just put one if condition and let's see if i'm writing ar array that uh, j so let's see this is uh, j is equal to zero and uh, or i'll do one thing j is equal to one i'll start okay j is equal to one and uh, this is j equal to one and this is zero so i'll say if j is what the next element is smaller than right what array of j minus one it means one minus one is equal to zero it means 13 is less than 20 or not if it is less than then do what then i have to do a swap logic here swap generally we do with the third uh, third variable that is a temporary variable let's see one a temporary variable that I'm going to use it, which is equal to. So first, what I'll do, I'll just simply store the array of uh, J here, right? The array of J is what the 13, 13 I'll store in temporary variable. And then I'm going to write this array of, I'll replace the value with J minus one is equal to array of J. Okay. And then once again, that I'm going to write, this is array of a J, which is equal to my temporary variable, right? Like this. So and I'll do one thing array of J is equal to array of J minus one. I'll replace it like this. And uh, this J minus one, which is equal to a temporary variable. So what will happen? Array of J, J is equal to what? Let's see, J is equal to one. So one is what? 13, 13 will be given to temporary variable, mm -hmm. right? And then I'm saying array of J, you get array of J minus one. It means array of J is what one will get. It means first index will get 20 and then the same 13 that we have stored will be given to j minus 1 means the first element. So it's simple basic sort uh, swapping swap algorithm that we have written here like this. And once everything is done and that's it. But it could be possible, right? Once all the elements are, let's see, sorted and then I have to proceed. I don't want to proceed further. In that case, no need to write a swap logic and no need to check this condition again and again in that case. So what I'll do, I'll just simply come out of this particular for loop and I'll put one more condition here that a Boolean flag, let's say I'm going to write here. That is a flag which is equal to initially a false here, right? And uh, I'm going to write one condition that if not flag or if flag is uh, equal to equal to here, sorry, sorting is not done. And I'll do one more thing. Once the swapping is done, I'll just make this particular flag is equal to true here, right? It means then you have to proceed further, right? Because the swapping is done. But let's see, once the swapping is completely done, and let's see arrays are already sorted then i don't need to proceed further then in that case all these if conditions everything will not become here and once inner loop i simply check that okay the flag value the current flag value current flag value is example let's see initially it is uh let's see false then it will make it true and flag equal to equal to false so what will happen in that case i simple once the sorted array is already done i immediately break this particular loop so this is a small section also that we have to use it here right so 
what will happen when I run this particular code now. So let's uh, simple uh, run it and let's see it is working or not. So I'm going to call it. And after the sort, I'm going to print this particular array once again. So let's see before sort, it was like this. Now after sort, I'm going to print it here. So let's uh, print it. So I'm simple writing. You can write a for loop also to print to string and then I'm passing ARR here. So let's see this logic is working fine or not. So it should be printed in the sorted array and then we will start writing the test cases. So yes, so far it's working fine. You can see that 12, 13, 15, 20, 67 and the 89. Yes, we are getting the right output here. It means this is yeah correct output. We are getting it right. So for example, now let's see uh, some different other test if you really want to write. So what we will do, let's keep um, adding some more test cases here. So let's see some duplicate values also we are writing. Let's see 12 is coming three times and then some negative value also I write. Okay, minus one. Let's see minus 40, something like this. And then I'm uh, adding some zero also here. Let's see zero is coming here. And then I'm adding uh, somewhere zero in between and then minus one like this also. So zero and negative value also I'm passing it here like this one by one. So here I'm saying, let's see array one, this is array two. And then this is array number three and then array number four. So I'll call this method multiple times. And then I'll just keep printing after this also array number two array number three and array number four so in within the same array only we are actually modifying or manipulating the value we are not creating any a temporary array variable once again right so let's see with all the different use cases it's working fine or not or with different set of data elements are getting sorted or not with the bubble sort logic so here yeah you can see that 12 13 15 up to 89 then all the duplicate elements first, then 13, 15, 20, 65, 89. That's perfectly fine. Then negative values first, minus 40, minus 1, 12, 13, 15, 20, 67, 89. That's fine. And then zero the element first, and then all the positive, okay, in the incremental order, which is also fine. And then I'm writing minus 1, 0, 12, and then negative value, 0, and then positive values. Yeah. So this is also in the sorted array here. Perfectly working fine here, right? So if you really want to see in the debug mode also, that also you can check it. So for example, let's see, I'm putting a debugger at line number nine, putting a debugger at line number 13 also. And then I'll do one thing. I'll just simple um, open in the debug perspective. So what do you do? You just simply go to window and uh, let's open a perspective, a debug perspective so that we can check the code in the debug mode as well. And then I'll do one thing. I'll just simply go to the expression section here. And in the expression, what exactly I'm going to do that? First of all, that let me just um, only once I'm just calling it. OK, I just want to debug only with one set of data, not with all. So let's see with only this particular element. Let's see this logic, how exactly this logic is behaving. Right. And uh, expression wise, I'm going to add simple expression. Let's say I really want to check the value of I. I really want to check the value of J. So I'll write all my variables and the expressions here. And I'll check that uh, what is the value of temporary variable as well. Temporary variable. And uh, I'm going to check this condition as well. So I'll just copy this expression and just simple paste it here. So it will tell you uh, the, okay, during the execution, the values will be displayed here. So I'll just keep checking that what is happening with the array. Okay. And then if you want, I can just, add a r r array also okay so let's run in the debug mode so right click on it and then go to debug as a java application launch it it will stop at line number nine okay and then initially you can see that array is available and other variables are not uh, declared yet or not initialized yet so i'll just step over and then line by line i'm going to execute this program so a flag also I can add it. So flag is by default a false right now. You can see false. Okay. Now let's quickly go through it. First time I equal to zero. Perfect. J is equal to one. So you can see that I equal to zero, J equal to one and J equal to one. So array of J also, if you want to check it, you can check it. So I'm writing what is the value of array of J. And then I'm going to add one more expression. See, this is how you can do the debugging also. So and j minus one, we can write it here. So here you can see array of j is 13 and then 20. So first two elements that we are passing here, you can see 20 and 13 
like this. So here I'm going to check that array of J is less than J of minus one. So yes, so 13 is less than 20. Condition is true here. Can you see true here? So it will come inside the if condition. So it's coming inside the if condition and the temporary variable is what? See the temporary variable first, it will become 13. And then array of J is equal to J minus one. So let's see after putting this array of J will become what 20 J minus one is also 20. And then what if the temporary variable is there? See temporary variable is 13, right? 13 will be given to array of J minus one. See the line number 17 here. So temporary variable is 10, 10 will be given to J of minus one. So let's do that. Perfect. Okay. So this is what we have done so far. And then finally, if the flag is equal to true, once again, flag is equal to true. That's okay. And again, for I equal to zero for J equal to one, two length minus one, it will execute that. So that's what, if you see the current elements of array here, you can see that initially it was what see 20 and 13. Now, after the first iteration of J, it becomes 13 and 20. Now, can you see it got first two sets or first two elements got sorted here. Can you see here 13 and 20? Right. So like this, I'll do one thing. I'll just keep sorting it here. So let's keep doing it. Okay. See, and keep checking the array and then all the elements after all the final iterations will be sorted here. So right now it's 13, 15, 20. Okay. So let's keep moving it. I cannot zoom in this particular section. Just try to adjust. So let's see. So 13, 20, this one is also fine. And then let's keep running it because 12 is also there. So it will, once it will reach 12, it will be compared with 89. So let's see now. Okay. Let's see 12 is reached here after 20. So it will just keep checking. So now you can see that so many iterations that I have to perform to sort this array. So deliberately I have actually returned 12 at the end. So that 12, we have to keep shifting from here to here before 20 as well. So before 13 as well. So that's what the position of 12. It will keep checking with the set of 12. So number of iteration, it will just keep adding it there. So that's what the time complexity will be O N uh, square. Okay. See this. Now the 12 is reached at the second position, second index in the array. And then uh, we'll just keep running it. So let's see, just keep running it. Now it reached to the first index and almost like all the elements got sorted. That was the last set that we have to perform now. So let's see now the sorting will happen. Swapping will happen between 13 and 12. And once yes, 12 is the lesser, then shift the position to the zero index. Now 12 shifted to zero index flag is equal to true. Yes. And then after that, absolutely fine. The sorted array we have found 12, 13, 15, 20, 67, 89. And then finally it will go and check what is the current value of flag flag is equal to what true. This not will make it false and flag equal to equal to false. Let's see after that, once again, it will just go and check. So it will not go to the second for loop because obviously that if condition, everything is gone. And then finally, I'm just going to print it. And now you can see the final sorted array that we are getting it. So 12, 13, 15, 20, 67, 89. That is what we are getting. Perfect. So this is how you can just simple debug the code with the help of expressions, variables, and you can check it here. And then uh, you can put a breakpoint or debugger point and then keep uh, running this program in the debug mode with the step over F6. So you can check step by step what is happening with the variable, with the if condition, with any expression or variable, you can check it here. So this logic is absolutely working fine. Same thing you can just apply with double array or any other type of array. The logic will remain same. The only thing is the test data will be different. Instead of integer array, you have to write in that case a double array or something like this, but that's okay. At the time of interview, you can just simply take the example with the integer array and then you are absolutely good to go with that. Perfect. So I hope you are uh, getting the things. So this is what uh, the bubble sort. And then we will see more and more examples, more sorting algorithms on the whiteboard. And then we will see in the form of programming. I hope it's clear. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching Navi Automation Labs. Please share the series, share this video with others who are looking for uh, DSA based uh, preparations and looking for some really good interviews, questions with respect to good companies, with respect to product based companies, with respect to DSA and uh, uh, Java coding questions. Thank you so much, guys.